What a century this has been. The airplane, the telephone, television, the computer. In the 20th century, technology has dramatically changed the way we live and the way we work. Take farming, for example. 50 years ago, most Georgia farms didn't have electricity, and the most a farmer could work in a year was about 30 acres. Today, one farmer can work thousands of acres and grow more food per acre than his grandfather ever dreamed of, all because of technology. Then came a new day. From the beginning, agriculture has played a central role in American life. I remember my country's first farms and my farmers. Feeding our people as well as sustaining our economy. I remember my first steel plow pulled by a team. It was a good life, but it wasn't easy. In that day and time, a family, which it was more than just a man because the whole family worked in the field uh, as well as in, in the house, uh, a family could work about 30 acres. They plowed until about 11 o'clock. They came back, fed the mules, let them rest a while, and went back and plowed until sundown. Now, it was, it was hard here. It was hard. But we didn't realize that we were poor because everybody else, all of our neighbors were, were poor. You needed uh, a wife and a bed and a, and, and a stove and, and a mule in 1940. And you could, you could make a crop. As our population has increased, farmers have had to learn how to farm more efficiently how to grow more food from the same acre of land. Today, a single farm worker can feed nine families, a far cry from the early days when he barely fed one. Today, farmers are still working to get the most from their land, and they're getting some high-tech help from a surprising source, the Department of Defense. Navstar GPS is a satellite and ground-based radio navigation system Desert storm technology is what some call this new way of farming. Dr. Craig Queen heads up the Precision Farming Program for the University of Georgia. What happened in Desert Storm, we know that the Defense Department was able to deliver weaponry exactly where they wanted it. Um, they were also able to track where their people were, and this global positioning system helped them do that. Global positioning system or GPS, refers to a series of satellites in constant orbit around the Earth. These satellites can tell you within one meter where you are any place on Earth. W.P. Smith and his son Tony are fourth and fifth generation farmers. The Precision Farming Program is helping them get more out of their southwest Georgia farm. We see technology happening all around us all the time, but uh, I think the, the future holds a lot for agriculture, and uh, one of the things that really excites me now is uh, that some of the new opportunities that we have uh, with uh, the possibilities of precision farming. I have seen yields go uh, from half bale to two bales, which is quadruple in my lifetime. Uh, I might be over, overly optimistic, but I believe with the technologists that we're getting with precision farming, perhaps we can double those yields again. And that will be a, a great thing, not only for farmers in this area, but for people all over the world because the amounts to feed are increasing tremendously. And uh, we got to produce more to, to feed the people. Helping farmers increase their yield per acre is what precision farming is all about. Here's how it works. By using a receiver like this one that's tuned to a satellite, a farmer can map out the boundaries of his land electronically. In other words, the satellite is telling the farmer exactly where he is within a few feet. And that information is stored in a laptop computer on board the vehicle. At the same time, he takes samples of the soil to be matched with their electronic address or location in the field. That data, now on a floppy disk, is then converted into a map. Now, with an accurate map of the field, farmers can know precisely which parts of the soil are healthy and which parts need fertilizer. 
This makes good economical as well as environmental sense. Because instead of throwing out hundreds of pounds of fertilizer or pesticide over an entire field, as it was done earlier in this century, there's now a more efficient way. Meet the Terragator, a high-tech fertilizer spreader. The technology of this machine enables the farmer to put the right amount of fertilizer in just the right spot. The onboard computer has already been programmed with a map of this particular field. It knows which areas need fertilizer and which don't. Each spreader arm has six nozzles located under the flaps, and each one is capable of dispensing a different product. This machine costs $150,000, and it's amazing. It weighs two tons, but it seems much lighter than that. It has special tires with deep ridges that don't flatten the ground or harden it. In fact, the tires exert only 25 pounds of pressure per square inch. A firm stomp from this man's boot compacts the ground much more than the machine does. But that's not the end of this high-tech farming story. In this peanut combine, there's a computer on board, and as the crop is harvested, it measures the yield or the amount of crop. How? By weighing the crop as it's harvested into the basket on top. And from that information, a yield map is produced, giving the farmer a clear picture of where his field is productive and where it may need some help. Tony Smith explains. Uh, the green in this case are the, the highest yielding areas in the field. It goes on down the spectrum, dark blue, yellow, red, and black to indicate where the high and low yields are. Some of the things we know why the yield varies, but some things we don't know. And that's what this project is all about, to help us to investigate, find out why we have variations in the field. In the last 100 years, farming has come a long way. Then came real power. In 1889, the steam tractor engine chugged clear across South Dakota and changed my world. Once upon a time, farmers got together to discuss how to keep their new steam engines running. Today, Tony Smith and his friend and fellow farmer Mike Newberry discuss their yield maps. Maps that were made with the help of a satellite 22,000 miles above the Earth. Uh, I think all the time about uh about the, uh, the song, The High Tech Redneck. Well, I hate to be, uh, consider myself a redneck, but I think the general public would really be surprised at the technology that we, that we go through. You know, I went to college, but uh, I think all that I learned in college was how to learn. And, uh, and that's the most applicable thing I got out of college is how to learn. And, and of course, we got new things coming at us all the time. And so we, we, we would just have to continuously be trying to to learn new things so that we can can stay in the ball game. It has been a frightening experience to, to know that uh, uh, the eye in the sky was looking at you now. Uh, but it we see after one year of working with it that it just has unlimited potential for the things it can do for us here in South Georgia. In the 1940s, there were 250,000 farmers in Georgia. Today, there are less than 40,000. All of them could fit in the Fulton County Stadium. <laughs>